everyone and welcome to another episode from us here at Digilog Collection about computer history. Um, in this episode I want to talk about uh, mathematical coprocessors or math coprocessors. age um, in the PC world uh, from around mid 80s to mid 90s uh, the advent of the Intel 486 uh, DX processor which included uh, math proper um, functionality inside the processor itself uh, pretty much killed the market for the coprocessors but for anything prior to that um, such as uh, if you had a computer that had an Intel 8086, 286 or 386 and you wanted to run uh, CAD applications for example uh, you needed to purchase a mathematical coprocessor. Uh, Intel um, produced those uh, for each generation of the CPUs um, to allow uh, applications to perform fast floating point operations. Um, other, other processors at the time, say uh, the one produced by DEC Corporation, such as like PDP 11, uh, VAX, and so on, um, you, they also supported floating point. Um, processors um, so it, you know there, there, there was there was a need for it in the market what I want to do today is I want to look at the uh, the later math coprocessors uh, those produced for the 8386 processors um, and just test uh, the speed say which one uh, is faster you know if you if you're um, you know back let's say in the uh, early 90s like 90 or 91 uh, well, which one would you uh, choose so for today I have uh, four of them I have uh, an IIT uh, AT, uh, C, uh, 3C87 uh, processor, and I have a Cyrix FastMath uh, math coprocessor, and I also have two versions of the Intel's own um, 8387 uh, math ones. And we'll run to a suite of applications and then uh, we'll draw some conclusions at the end. I, I'm missing some. Uh, most notably the ULSI math coprocessor uh, as well as the uh, Intel RapidCAD. Now the reason I didn't include RapidCAD is because it's not as so much um, a math uh, a coprocessor itself but rather uh, it upgrades your processor from a 386 to a 486 and, and also adding math uh, properties. So that's kind of a separate category. Um, so uh, anyway, let's let's uh, let's see our uh, contenders. Now that we established what uh, microprocessors we are testing, uh, I want to explain a little, little bit about testing methodology. Uh, I try to choose applications uh, from a large spectrum of, of options so that it, um, we get a better feeling of what's faster. So first I chose uh, an application called VistaPro, uh, which is kind of a card-like application. At the time it allowed you to render somewhat realistic um, landscapes. Uh, then I chose um, um, a synthetic mathematical test, three of them, uh, Linpack, uh, LLL, which is Livermore uh, Labs Loops, and Whetstone. And finally, I also chose, have chosen uh, Quake for uh, game uh, rendering. So we'll run the processors through all these uh, tests and applications, uh, and then we'll see at the end uh, what results we have. All right, so let's talk about our results. As I mentioned before, um, I, will, I wanted to do something like a CAD application, so I chose Vista Pro, and I did two renderings of it, one of the Maui Island and one of the Matterhorn Peak. The first one was 649,000 triangles, and the second one, 330,000 triangles. Then I chose three um, 
synthetic MathFX first is LeanPack. Second one is LLL, which stands for Livermore Labs Loops, which runs a lot of math kernels. Actually, it's the longest one of the three. And uh, last is uh, the Whetstone benchmark. And I wanted to finish with a game application for that I chose uh, Quake. Uh, while not playable, it still allowed me to differentiate between uh, the four mathematical processor speed. So how do we measure this? Well, the first two are measured uh, in seconds, so uh, lower value is better. Uh, the next three uh, return a million floating point, in, floating point operations per second, or, or envelopes. A uh, value of higher is better. And the last one is uh, Quake returns frames per second, and again, higher is better. All right, so let's look at the first contender, which was the IIT 3C87 coprocessor. That uh, rendered the MAUI island in 416 seconds, and it rendered uh, the matter core in 267 seconds. Uh, for a synthetic test, uh, LIMPAC returned 0 0.41 uh, megaflops, LLL returned 0 0.47, and finally Weston reported 0 0.57. Quake ran at an abysmal but doable 1.5 frames per second. Then I tested the Sarix uh, FastMath chip. Um, this one uh, was slightly faster, uh, 413 seconds for Maui and 266 seconds for Matterhorn. Um, in Limpack, it did a lot better. Uh, 0.47 LL was a lot better, uh, 0.62, and surprise, Whetstone actually scored 0 0.82 uh, megaflops. And even in Quake, as you would expect, it did better 1.8. So that meant that now Cyrix is our fastest uh, chip that we have at the moment. Then I took a look at the first of the two uh, Intel-based 387DX chips, the L3011448. That was slightly slower in MAUI, 417, and rendered Matterhorn 268 slower. However, for synthetic tests, it's called better across uh, the board than the IIT chip and sometimes better, sometimes slower than fast math. And the Quake results was also in between the two. And the last one was the second Intel 3876 chip I had. The first one was actually ma note, has a note rate that says 33 megahertz. The second one did not. Uh, however, one thing to keep in mind is that all those are under 40 megahertz. Um, so the um, slightly slower on, on MAUI, but otherwise pretty much identical results with the previous 387DX. Um, so after all this, this how, how do we look? So how, how, which one is the fastest? So I want to put a caveat here that this is only for the applications I've tested. There are other things uh, you can run to test the mathematical speed, and the results might be sometimes different. So in the last... Uh, play, surprisingly enough, was actually the IIT 3C87, followed by in the third and second place by the Intel, and the winner of my test turned out to be the Cyrix FastMath.